Oh boy, you know what this means. We must have a special guest coming with us today. That's right. Mrs. Primetime is coming garage selling with us. But first she needs her morning coffee and then we're gonna head out, so let's get ready, folks. What's up, sleepyhead? Are you coming with us? <laughs> no, you gotta stay here, right? You can't come with us. <laughs> we'll check in with you later. You just keep everything safe, all right? All right, guard dog. Bye, Daisy. All right, we're in the vehicle. Mrs. Primetime is right here. So, uh, <laughs> she's already wondering what I'm gonna say about her. You know, I think we might need a petition to get you on camera, maybe. How many signatures would be required? 500? <laughs> a thousand? You're so beautiful. <laughs> I wish people could see you. <laughs> if you really amp up the volume, you could hear a little bit of laughter from her there. All right, we're almost at the first garage sale. All right, this is the first sale. A moving sale right across from us, and it says free stuff. So that's awesome. And there it is, straight ahead. Free stuff! This kid better not have a lemonade stand. Just one dollar for the chocolate fondue fountain. That's, that's great. So definitely gonna pick that up. Awesome. So this is the free table and you always should take a look because you never know what you might find. And this was a great treasure, this hardcover Henry Rollins book, a famous musician. Uh, this is uh, Get in the Van and it is a very difficult to find book. It's a first edition, first printing. I couldn't believe it, in excellent condition. Wait to hear the comps on this in a minute. Uh, I'll go over it with you, but uh, really, really neat book. And then uh, Mrs. Primetime found this, this nice uh, sunflower chest, and then there's a smaller one inside. The prices were amazing, and this is the advantage of going to a moving sale because a lot of times people just giving stuff away. There's another thing there we'll tell you about later. I couldn't believe this was sitting on the free table, which is why you should always check uh, for anything that's on those tables, including books. So this is a hardcover, and as I showed you before, it's a first printing. Now, in terms of comps on it, there are trade paperbacks that have sold for as high as $63 plus $15 shipping. Right now, there's only one of these available, and it's a trade paperback for $150. There's a hardcover that did sell without the slip cover for like 50 bucks or so, but with this being a hardcover first printing, I mean, I'm hoping that I get around 100 bucks for it or so. I mean, we'll see, maybe even more. I mean, it's just amazing. I am definitely gonna price it high and then we'll just see what happens, but you can't lose on this uh, getting it for free. So amazing find. And uh, Mrs. Primetime also got a couple things for Daisy that I'm gonna show you later. So they're, they're pretty cute. Uh, we're not showing you the things that Mrs. Primetime got right now because she's recovering after I accidentally whipped her in the head with the bead of the uh, Mountain Dew mask that Noel Griffith got me. So sorry about that, Mrs. Primetime. I'm gonna just use this mask for the rest of the day. All right, now these are the community garage sales that I took you to a few months ago and it was dead. But um, this is really when it was supposed to truly be rescheduled for. And there should be a lot of cars lined up if this is going to really be kicking back up again. And there's many more already compared to last time. And I could already see uh, down the road there that there's a bunch of them too. So... I think we're good to go. I think this is gonna be better than last time. All right, nothing at the first one, so onwards and upwards. 
So I didn't pick this up and I'll tell you why in a moment, but it's the type of thing that you should look out for. So I wanna point it out to you, which is something that's brightly colored and unique. So how often do you come across a hot pepper plush with a sombrero on top that says freaking hot? Not often, but it had this rip across the seam that we could not fix without it looking repaired and the pellets are coming out, so we left it behind. But there was this sewing kit that I went over to, and even though they were selling the whole kit, you could still go in and pull out some individual things like these vintage Drake's patches for devil dogs and ring dings. I got them for two bucks. You could sell a couple of them for $14.99. So it's definitely not as crowded as it used to be. So this would be normally all packed with cars. And the, you know, there are some cars out. It, it looks like it's better than the last time I came here, but it's not back to pre-COVID form. Uh, it's not anywhere close actually, but you know, there's still some people that have some sales. So we'll just keep going around. It's a pretty big development and you know, see if we can find anything. All right, so no luck on these last two garage sales. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, I did a video a while ago called 10 ways in which you could figure out that a garage sale is going to be bad. And the most popular one of those that I came up with was that if there's a lemonade stand at the garage sale, that means it's just going to be terrible because it's going to be all like kid stuff and things that just aren't worth anything. Well, since then, people have been on a mission to try to find things at a garage sale that's valuable, and they call them lemonade stand finds. And the only one who's really managed to pull this off has been Troy Shockley from Mountain Man Treasures. So maybe in Montana, garage sales are different with lemonade stands, but in general, and even there it's rare, but I'm going to add another wrinkle and I'm going to up the challenge to Troy. This is something I just discovered. If the lemonade stand is actually named by the kid, so for example, if it's called Samantha's Lemonade Stand, they actually put a sign out displaying that, then it's extra terrible, okay? So I defy anyone to find a named lemonade stand find at a garage sale that's valuable, all right? Challenge is on. So I snagged this from another garage sale. Could not believe it. Only a dollar for this solid metal a Brett Favre sign. Uh, so that was a great price. Mrs. Primetime comped it while I was in the car. Um, about 45 bucks for it or so. So uh, definitely a good pickup there. Uh, then I went over to another garage sale and they had some VHS tapes. I always like to look through them because you never know what you might find. And again, I like to find something kind of offbeat like this. You know, it's uh, Dennis Awe, who is a uh, waltz uh, performer. And, you know, there's like a certain niche collector that gets stuff like this. And so right now his VHS tapes are priced at around $40 because they're not mass produced. And so I grabbed this uh, cassette tape set as well to add to it. Total price, 75 cents for everything. Now, will it sell for, you know, 40 bucks? Who knows? One of those VHS tapes recently sold for 10 bucks. But, you know, you never know. It's not on the market now. And so you just take a shot sometimes and see what happens. All right, nice view here, and we're gonna turn around and hit up some more sales. All right, as we walk over to our next sale, you know, a lot of people like to correct me when I say niche and tell me to say niche, but they're both proper pronunciations, and I'm more of a harder consonant kind of guy. Now, with this one, I don't really have a choice because the proper pronunciation of this one is Yingling uh, as a beer. So I love to get a uh, brewery type of stuff. And uh, this is a custom-made piece. So I got her down to $3 for it, and I'm hoping to get maybe somewhere around 50 for it. Well, it's a beautiful day, but, you know, this is what we're seeing on a lot of the streets. Just not many sales at all. Uh, some people going out for a bike ride and stuff, but uh, just, you know, very sporadic. So we're just, you know, stopping off wherever we see things and just keep on going around. All right, so the next thing I know, I'm on some lady's driveway and she has this storage trailer that's filled with boxes of books. So you know what that means, right? That's right, I'm gonna go through every single one of these boxes. This is one of the first ones that I picked out. It's this big book on textile designs and you can see there's lots of pictures and stuff in there. It goes for around 20 to $30. 
every single one of the books in there was a dollar each so that was a good pickup the problem is most of them were overproduced modern books like the for dummies book but this was one of the few vintage ones uh, that i picked out it's called british bouquet it's from 1963 always look inside by the way you never know what you might find like this police card so uh, sometimes you can find valuable things but it's about british luxury and again it's you know something around like a 20 dollar book or so you know every, anytime you see these bargain books stickers on there be careful uh, so, you know, it's just you know, modern stuff, not usually worth anything. Same thing with these, you know, magazines. But uh, Mrs. Primetime was uh, getting a little impatient in the car, as uh, you'll see here. <laughs> so this is a really nice piece that I just picked up at a garage sale. I wanted $5. I got it for 3 bucks by Coliseum. You can see it's extra large. I love to pick up sports uh, apparel like this, especially... You know, if it's got a cool mascot on the side, like we've got the Wildcat right here, uh, just really cool. So uh, it's a nice piece. It's in great shape and, um, you know, excited for this one. We'll see what I get for it, but uh, it'll be a nice return on investment again for only three bucks. And this is a little Mrs. Primetime find right here. So uh, she picked this one up for just 50 cents and these little pieces, uh, they just pull out there so you could just change the date and stuff. So really cool there's the back made in japan so you know you always look for that that signifies value if it's made in japan uh, so really good so good job mrs primetime now the best part of the day was getting some lunch with mrs primetime there you can see that famous hand right there we love that pizza mm. we're going to turn on the secret pthq cam we're going to go back to primetime treasure headquarters and see what daisy's up to what does she do when we're gone daisy all right well here we go again with a bunch of more free stuff i cannot believe that this entire box of metal nameplates for the different barbecue companies was free so i grabbed the entire box most of it's charbroil which is a pretty standard brand but you know you could have people whose nameplates fell off and they need a replacement i don't see any of these for sale on ebay so i'm not sure what i'm going to do with them i might list them individually in smaller lots or as one big lot let me know what you would do you could see we even have a uh, Weber there and some other brands. Now, this is the only hat that I picked up out of this whole box. It's a California Angels one, but it's vintage. You could see that from the Coca-Cola label on the back. So I'd hope to get around 20 bucks uh, for that hat. So it was only a dollar. So good pickup there. This was an even better pickup, this cloudy plastic bag. I started looking through it. The first thing that I pulled out was this uh, pin, Smokey the Bear, Forest Ranger, and that one would go for around 10 to $15. And I got the entire bag for just two bucks. Uh, a lot of pipes, as you could see in here, a lighter. I don't know a lot about pipes, so if you do, uh, let me know in the comments, uh, you know, what it is that you think you see there and any information about uh, value. There's all different styles, different colors, different materials uh, that make these up. It's pretty neat. I mean, I think there's some good value in there just based on, you know, what I do know about them. Well, there's one of them in there is one of the wooden looking ones that look like it might be part of like some magic act or something based on some of the inscriptions uh, that I saw on the back of it. But uh, the reason I was able to get it for so low was because it didn't belong to her or anyone even in her family. It was uh, of the father of a friend of hers who just like gave it to her. So she didn't care. And she's just like, you know, two bucks. That's why you have to ask. You know, you might think, oh, that's going to be a lot of money, but it had no price on it. So I just asked. Uh, there were some other things in there like this um, uh, Wolf uh, Boy Scouts of America a neckerchief. It looks like a ring, but I knew what that was because I've actually found that metal detecting before. Then there was the It's a Wonderful Life throw. Great movie. Christmas time coming up. This will be perfect to list. It's got you know a nice imprint of uh, different characters from the movie. 
Uh, it's got a nice little uh, fringe end to it as well, which is always a nice um, selling point. You want to make sure you mention that. And it's not just black and white. It also has some green to it as well. So just $5 for that one. I'd hope to get around 50 bucks for it. This is definitely a $50 piece or you know, 45, 50 bucks. I just was at the right place at the right time. She just brought this out literally when I was there and plopped it down. She only wanted $5 for it. And then I grabbed the, uh, it's actually sealed inside, the Godzilla King of Monsters blu-ray dvd but that one's actually for us i gave it to my son primetime junior he loves godzilla as do i and uh, we love that movie now uh this here this was awesome for five dollars can you believe this it is amazing it's an avengers assemble uh blanket you know throw i mean it's massive this thing will even cover me and i'm six foot six so uh, this thing uh, it's just crazy so you know it's got so many characters on there whole captain america you know iron man and the like i mean it, it's crazy i i just cannot wait to get that one uh, listed, although I might use it for a little bit before I list it. There are a bunch of t-shirts here. So it's Doctor Who, David Tennant, and Doctor Strange right below. I picked those up. Uh, it was two bucks a t-shirt, and given the deal that I was you know, given on that blanket, I just paid her to two bucks a piece for the shirts. Guardians of the Galaxy, Corrosion of Conformity. Look up some of the comps on those shirts. Some of them could go for hundreds of dollars if they're vintage, so we'll see what happens with that one. I'll probably price it high. Uh, Stranger Things, pick that up. Uh, obviously, that's you know the TV show, but that had like a little comic book theme to it, which was cool. Yes, there's Mountain Dew. No, I didn't pick it up because there's a million of those around, and I already have one anyway. Uh, X-Men, I picked up this t-shirt. This was cool. And then some Japanese anime. These are both uh, Tokyo Ghoul. You could tell that just by looking inside the label there. So uh, uh, all in all, I paid $19 for all that stuff. So that was an amazing score, and uh, this is amazing as well. Mrs. Primetime picked this up, Walt Disney World Back Scratcher. So uh, just a neat piece. Uh, we're very happy on how we did today. Now, I had this one little parking lot area that was actually closing up by the time we got there, so I just decided to go and see if I could find anything. And sure enough, look at this, another T-shirt, Deadpool, really nice and colorful, so I grabbed that one for a dollar. And uh, I was really excited about that. So a bunch of comic-related shirts today. Well, we are going to turn around and head back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters because this used to all be filled with cars, and now it's just dead, as you can see. So time to head back. Well, since we had Mrs. Primetime in this video, sort of, um, I figured I would show you one of the few furniture restoration projects that she worked on this year. And uh, she finally finished it. You could see some of the materials she was using. I don't have a before picture to show you, but these basically look like brown, run-down, you know, damaged pieces of furniture. Damaged in the sense that they had scuffs on and stuff, but everything uh, works. But now they're beautiful. She sanded them down, she painted them blue, and these will go right up on Facebook Marketplace. So it's just something that she, you know, does for fun and, you know, makes some money off of it. So, you know, just wanted to pass it on to you. And these are the two items that Mrs. Primetime picked up at the very first sale. So this is a life vest for Daisy, if Daisy ever goes in the water. These things are actually very expensive. Uh, she got it for just a dollar, and this she got for three dollars. So this is a little carry pouch. So if she wants to put Daisy in it, she can carry uh, Daisy around in it. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know what that sun means if you saw my prior video on photo tips and staging. That's right, it's time to use those colorful beams of sun and get St. Anthony and St. Francis photographed and listed. They're both up right now if you want to take a look. Now don't forget to hit that like button down below. You see it right there? Yes, right there. Just give it a big thumbs up. But St. Anthony, you're not supposed to forget anything and you forgot to tell them to make sure that they comment and subscribe. St. Anthony forgets nothing, St. Francis. You just didn't let me finish as usual. We'll let primetime end this off. Shout out to Julie Busby, by the way. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, uh, we're back here settling in now to just relax for the day. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with us uh, for the ride. Don't forget to say hi to Mrs. Primetime down below in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like, uh, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you back at the next one, everyone. Take care.